What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at Sony Hall in Times Square, and today we are here with Seller Darling. It is so great to be able to talk with you. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Yeah, it's so great to have you here. The Spell, I can't believe, is now almost three years old. I still listen to that album like it just came out yesterday. Being that this is a concept album representing a specific individual going through multiple spaces and times, did you all think of this concept before you started writing the album and wrote the music according to that? Or was there like music already written before a concept came into mind? We wrote the music according to the concept. So the concept was there first, and actually even some of the album titles were there first and then we wrote the music accordingly did it at all have any relation to the previous album this is the sound or was this were you like completely exploring like brand new territory for seller darling with uh, this album uh this is the sound was more like uh yeah like a typical debut album we didn't really know where to go so we tried out a lot of different things and um, the first one this is the sound wasn't a concept album so I guess that's like the biggest difference to the spell and uh, with this concept that's addressed in the spell is there any um, essence of your personal life or personal experiences incorporated in this or were you completely portraying somebody who is completely outside of who you all personally are um, I don't think I could actually write music or lyrics that don't portray a part of me. Like, it's always going to be in there. But I try to work as much with metaphors and with, you know, creating different worlds so that it's not, that my footprints aren't obvious anywhere. Do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, the, the whole topic of the girl falling lo in love with death and longing for death um, that that is a part of of who I am as well, and music is a way I deal with those kind of things as well. Being that you all can have so many different in uh, forms of instrumentation incorporated, from you know very folk and traditional elements to you know a lot of great ripping guitars, the riffs incorporated in the beginning of Death really hit hard. Would you say the different forms of instrumentation also? Um, uh, express different emotions or different feelings as well? I think naturally, yes, that's the case. <laughs> but yeah, I think we're just, we're not thinking too much about how to instrumentate the things, you know, it just comes out naturally. I guess, yeah, it's our music is very intuitive. I mean, we're not like, trained musicians so it's not like we we go by any schemes or anything we just play by heart and compose by heart so that's really surprising to hear when i hear the instrumentation it almost sounds studied in a way and it sounds it's very technically impressive so uh that there so there's no theory at all incorporated in seller darling no i don't I, we can't even read music or anything so like there's nothing also written down because we, we really just work with our ears. That's it. Yeah. Does the feeling that uh, spawns this instrumentation and this idea, does this come out of nowhere in a way? Or do all three of you kind of like need to put yourself in a specific atmosphere or be in a specific environment in order to cultivate different musical ideas? Mm, it's really different, honestly. Like sometimes I just, I'm in a state where I have a lot of ideas and they kind of just come flying and that's obviously the the best state to be in and sometimes I kind of have to put myself somewhere in order to be creative like rent a, a mountain cabin for a week or something and and really take the time to write so there's for me there's a lot of different types of processes I mostly get the ideas um, not when I'm trying to write music it's always like outside of that if I'm in a bus on the way to work or whatever that's like where, where the idea ideas come yeah. most and yeah this is kind of difficult because I need to write it down but I can't I mean I don't have a guitar with me most yeah. of the times so I try to remember until I'm back home yeah I, d I do voice memos as well but they sound terrible <laughs> because, because I'm not a singer 
right? And it's hard to write down uh, to sing guitar riffs. So, <laughs> well, it, it, I uh, famous saying the best ideas or the best forms of inspiration always strike at the most inconvenient times, right? Mm, yeah, that's true. That's the case with me, at least. Yeah. In terms of um, this concept, because when you're playing live tonight, um, unfortunately, we can't hear the whole album uh, in its entirety. And uh, but you also I, I think in the set list, you bring like one or two songs from This Is The Sound as well. So when you bring this into a live setting and, you know, play the songs in a different order, uh, do you almost think that that brings a new type of meaning or different context to the material in a way? It's actually um, that's a good question, because usually like since we released the album we mostly played headlining shows um yeah and obviously during the pandemic we didn't play at all so we actually haven't had a chance to play the album in its entirety a lot but on our last headlining tour we played the songs from the spell first starting with pain and going like more or less by order and doing the this is the sound songs after that because it would just feel kind of weird to mix them up like i asked both of the guys what what they think and they were both like yeah no we shouldn't really do that because it just kind of there there's a, such a specific atmosphere in the spell that can't really be mixed with this is the sound that we feel that so on this tour even though we're playing the spell songs first it, it still feels so strange to just, you know, play like three, four of the songs and not having this order that we start with pain and kind of introducing the story. It feels kind of weird. We still have to get used to it. Do you think that maybe brings a new type of character? Like when you're saying, here I am, I've come for you, look me in the eyes and tell me your name, which is such an amazing chorus. Uh, do you almost feel like maybe are you sort of like talking as if you were that character in a way or is this more or less kind of do you consider the song almost like a demonstration of that character i think it's more of a demonstration yeah like a a, a narrative do you want uh seller darling's music to also be open to interpretation or could um do you, or do you want the listener to sort of like uh be just as engaged into the story as the music itself I definitely want people to interpret our songs and our lyrics their own way. I think that's really that's really important to me. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think for me that's like the, the my favorite thing about music that I can make my own interpretation, or the people, the listeners can also interpret the music for themselves. I think that's the most valuable valuable thing for me. Because, yeah. yeah. Mm. Now, it might be kind of like a bit of a vague question, but like, you know, there's been so many concept albums uh, that do address elements of death. I mean, Nevermore did it with Dreaming Neon Black. My Chemical Romance did it with The Black Parade. So there's like so many different styles that use death as a subject matter. Why do you feel like that the style that Cellar Darling plays is the best sort of style to bring your concept through fruition? Well, I don't think it is the best style, but it's just the style that we play. Um, and the thing with death is it's, you know, it, the fascination with death is, it's so vast. You know, it's being portrayed in, in all kinds of music, um, in opera, in, in musicals, you know, everywhere. Um, we just have this, this fascination with it, with death, with love, with all of the big um, topics, yeah. Death is really the only thing that could be expressed in a scientific uh, method, uh, in a scientific aspect, an artistic aspect, a philosophical aspect. I've always said that art will stop being made once we know what happens when you die. I'm, I've never really thought that far, but that's an interesting, it's an interesting thought. Uh, for the future of Cellar Darling, do you plan on uh, like making a sequel to this concept or like continuing uh, what this character would be? Or do you plan to explore different meanings and different topics and different narratives? For me, the it's done. Like with the spell, uh, we put so much work into that and um, it, it was a really difficult time as well. And so for me, um, this topic is definitely over and I think we could all work through a lot as well. And it really came to an end. And 
we're already exploring a concept for the next album, which is not a lyrical concept, but a musical one. Um, so that's going to be pretty interesting. I don't want to say too much about it in case we find out that the concept is shit and we're going <laughs> to you know, uh, do something different. So, yeah. Um. When it comes to the instrumentation as well, is it better if you all are kind of like in your own little worlds when writing music? Or do you think, um, do you all have to be on the same page when you're songwriting? Or could being off in your own little worlds actually maybe help enhance the song in a way? I think both, both is true for us. I mean, sometimes we work uh, more together. Sometimes we just work for each other, everyone for themselves. And uh, yeah, I think the it's kind of the mix of these different kinds of workflows we have, which kind of makes our sound. Mm -hmm. I think this kind of helps to elevate our sound. Uh, for me, it would be boring always to add guitars, right? So sometimes I start with guitars, sometimes I add guitars, sometimes we she comes up with a riff idea. Um, yeah, I think we're very open to all kinds of workflows mm -hmm. yeah we're not stuck into one specific way yeah. um and it, when you play live is there at all kind of like a similar energy that you it, it, that you play into your live presence as you do when you're songwriting is there at all anything that ties those arts together or do you consider them two completely separate forms of self-expression for me they're <laughs> completely different i really Writing music is one of the, my favorite things. I feel so comfortable and I feel so confident in that moment. And I think live performance is still something I, I qu struggle with quite a lot. Like I have anxiety to go on stage and it's quite a terrifying <laughs> experience, even though it's also really great at the same time. It's very complex, my feelings towards it, but I consider them two separate things because I can also imagine, you know, just doing one of those, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Well, when, when death and darkness and pain is, you know, what fuels the creativity, obviously it makes the artistic process very cathartic, but can that also maybe make the artistic process deteriorating, kind of going back to what you said with like your anxiety and stuff, does that at all, is, is there at all kind of like a suffering that has to happen with your creative process? Um. I at some point I thought that that was the case that I can only be creative once I'm in a state of depression or struggling with something um, because otherwise what do I have to say when I'm happy when I'm fine when I'm stable because that's you know it's great but it's also very boring is what I thought at the time but I'm I'm trying to kind of um, you. I'm trying to not see it like that because I believe we just tell ourselves that this is the case that we can be creative only you know when it's about pain and death and, and what not when we are at our worst art tends to be at its best right <laughs> yeah um, and now being that seller darling all three of you have been involved in different projects and different bands before is there at all a specific method behind the madness that applies to every project you've all been involved with or is every project like a completely different mind frame blank, blank. <laughs> I don't know I mean it's not something I think about I just do right I just I released a uh, with a friend of mine a uh, um, black metal project I released an album just recently. We worked on it f uh, in 2021, no, 2020, when the pandemic started. And um, yeah, I think the workflow is always kind of, it feels always the same to me. It's just, I write music, that's it. I, I don't think about it. It's a really hard question, to be honest. Yeah. Um. <laughs> And I have two more questions. Um, going back to the concept of the spell, do you want every album to be like a snapshot of who you all are at that particular time? Or do you think that maybe, because I've always said that art is life, and when you bring it to the, into the world, it can grow and it develops. Sometimes it could eventually die. Do you want, could maybe the concept 
evolve over time as you evolve as an artist or do you prefer if every album is a snapshot of who you are at that particular time well with seller darling i try to kind of as i said before i try to take myself out of the picture even though it's it's me dealing with stuff um you know i kind of cloud all these things with with metaphors so i want it to be pretty timeless and not you know a specific snapshot at least that's what i try yeah and i saved the most difficult question for last and i want you both to answer because i want to see how do you know when a song is finished never yep i was expecting that it's terrible that's the most terrible terrible <laughs> thing because you could always go on and go on yeah um but i'd imagine there is do you almost need like an external person like a, a person from outside of the band whether it be a producer or an engineer or somebody to say it's done do it no more or just no, we just book the studio we just we just know okay in four months we we go to the studio it's booked we can't change it so that's it yeah. And that's also why you work with producers. And that it's why we work with our producer, because I, I could do everything by myself because I'm a sound engineer as well. So we would have all of the, you know, all of the steps could be taken care of by ourselves. But I just need, we need an external person to, you know, yeah, to just also give us some input. It's yeah. always great to, well, it's great to always believe in yourself and, you know, have your own instinct, uh, words of wisdom and uh, constructive advice from others is always a great blessing. Absolutely. Yeah. So before we go, I want to thank you both so much for your time. So great to finally be able to talk with you guys. Is there just a, anything else with Seller Darling that you'd like to promote now that the spell has been out for a while? Could we be expecting some new music fairly soon or any other uh, touring that you would like to uh, announce if you're allowed to say? Not really. We're working on stuff, but it's not really something we can or want to talk about yet. Um, it's really nice that, you know, this is happening again. We get to play live again, and we're just really grateful for everything. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, everybody. We are here with Seller Darling, The Spell. Be sure to check it out if you haven't already. We'll see you next time on Heavy New York. <laughs>